Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Brick command you awaken! Now! Who do you work for? Brick demand answers! Welcome back everybody, Ross here with more Pikmin 4, and we are finally done with Sun Speckled Terrace, so we're finally hopping off the new frontiers to Area 2. Yep, Sun Speckled Terrace, totally done. Just gotta ignore that. Alright. No more SOS signals, looks like we found everyone. Yeah, not everything. All right, Area 2, Blossoming Arcadia. I'm going to assume many flowers. Much pretty. Wow. Brick away! <clears throat> if you're in a hiding spot, you won't be found by nearby creatures. Don't hesitate to hide in thickets in a pinch. Oh. So that's what it means when, like, the screen goes dark when I go through a bush or something. Okay, so you can hide. This is just a test. Basic Pikmin practice allocating the squad in different ways. <clears throat> Burbs! Oh, baby snagrits. Huh, they're kind of cute. Whereas I find the actual snagrits kind of nightmare demons. I don't like bird snake. Oh, snitch bugs! Seeing all these familiar faces in HD. Well, the baby snagrits are new. But I'm familiar with, like, the type of creature. Neat. Alright. Recommend it for this area. Not red, huh? Okay. Damn it. Alright, you get that. We'll get you eventually, you son of a bitch. Yes. Come on. Another Matryoshka doll head. So, it seems like my, um, settings have kind of... My recording has kind of chilled the fuck out. They seem to have things pretty good now. So, I will not have to abandon this series. Which, good. Are these those... Yeah! I remember you guys. Started on that. Ah, 
Up to it, squad. Do we already have enough working on it? There we go. Oh, Wally Hogs. Or Wally Wogs? Whatever they were called. Oh, Olimar again. New base available. Get up. All right, everybody's all over there. Up on over, squad. One of them will land. Maybe not. Oop. Misshapen pond. This looks large. Like something big might come beat my ass over here. about those fucking things. Yeah, they're not much of a threat, but they make your Pikmin freak the hell out and panic. I don't know, something about this area triggers my danger sense. I don't think I want to go further. Fuck you! Get some building on this bridge done. Do, 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 do. Come on. It's that leafling again! And the figure lying, home, oh, lying down over there might just be our pilot! Come on, me, bitch. This is no joke. They could be turned into a leafling. What are you waiting for, newbie? Hurry up and save them! Yeah, yeah, but bridge. Speedy water boys. Where's Moss going? I mean, Ochi. Okay. Take these. Oh, yeah, 
Yeah, this would be a better spot, huh? Eh. Materials transported. Hell yeah. What is this? It's frosty? Okay. Train rolling. There's a cave up here. Drafty gallery. Beneath the passage, all I see is an interminable, interminable darkness. I tossed a pebble into the abyss, but never heard it hit the ground. I must receive the caution here. I don't want any Pikmin accidentally thrown to their demise, let alone shaken off by some creature. Well, that place looks dangerous. Okay, I command... him to go. Alright, alright. So I can put Brick on autopilot as well. That's good. faster to go across the water, it seems. Let's break down that icy gate. Ugh, what is that? I feel like this is the better spot, just in general. Are you guys going? Deal with you later. Whew, he went for it. 
Oh, shit! I just noticed this up here. That'd be helpful. I saw that. Hell no. Oh! Thought the ice ones might be okay. A pitman got wet and needs some help. Get rid of the water fast, B. Okay. You guys are pussies. Got it. All right, all right, all right. Let's see, recommended. Red and yellow. Okay. Drafty Gallery. <clears throat> God, this might get me enough for Area 3. I'm decently close to 4,000. Man, Ochi's rush comes pretty close to killing them instantly. Oh, is that a treasure? Like a little glow band? I thought it might have been like some device to activate. Oh, we go. All right. So, you know, by the time this uploads, everyone will have seen it. But, like, so yeah, who saw the trailer for the new Pokemon? I'm still, like, I might not get the DLC, because, come on, let's be honest. Scarlet and Violet are a fucking embarrassment. In order to open numbered gates, defeat the creatures protecting it. That's a new, uh, thing. But, um... I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they introduced a new ghost type. And at the end of the trailer, it, uh, just pretty much murders an entire village of children. And then it flies up and winks at the camera with a little, like, Teehee, aren't I such a little scamp? Like, n no, no, the Teehee cartoon wank. You, you, you don't do that after committing mass murder. <laughs> what the fuck, Pokemon? Ugh, I'm concerned about picking a fight with that thing. Because it could very easily launch everyone off. Destroy this? Yes, they can. Damn. 
and 4,000. Cha-ching. Brickmaster Excavator. Fantastic. We accomplished our goal with so much energy collected. We could really expand the radar search area. Where does this take me? Ooh. Can I not break eggs by myself? You win today, egg. Brick shall return. Please come this way. Okay. You're not entirely brain dead. Take your shot. Get fucked. And we go get a, the treasure over here. Don't accidentally throw one off. Kind of cleans out this floor, huh? Go check out that candy pop, bud. Alright, this floor clear. Alright, is that an ice flower? A very light blue. I can't believe a flower that big is blooming underground. I believe it's called a candy pop bud. When you throw a Pikmin into it, they're transformed into a Pikmin that matches the color of the flower. Oh, Unbelievable. Man. They can even change color? Pikmin are the strangest creatures. New creature discovered. As we approached the giant flower, the Pikmin looked at me as though begging to be thrown inside. So I tried it, and with a pop, Flower released from pigment seed, the same color as itself. The sound reminded me of my favorite candy, so I'll call it Candy Pop Bud. Bait and switch. Bomb in your hand when a giant crew is about to attack. Pull a bait and switch to leave them with the bomb to eat rather than you. How do you do that? Do you just carry it in your hand and when they bite, they get the bomb? That's actually a useful one. Yes, status report. I have way more red lads, so since we can't uh, farm ices on the surface yet. Let's go flower these new boys up. I never hit that one, do I? Where, do, where does that one eat you? Back to base. All right. 
down we go into this industrial abyss. mentioning the numbered gates. I'm guessing we're going to see one of those at some point in this in here. <clears throat> hello, hello. I'm find my way up there. to the final floor open up. Hello. you. Let's deal with this abomination. I remember you from Pikmin 2. I'm sure to fight it the same way, except easier now with the whole rush thing. Fuck yeah. Make that money. Well, energy. I'm still on that money grind set from Pikmin 2, damn it. Even though I haven't played that game in years. I swear to god, I am. What? Oh, it's the kind you throw them on. safer on Ochi. Less chance of a Pikmin randomly falling off. They're, they're pretty good about not doing it, but just, you know, be careful. Brick does not enjoy unnecessary casualties. had a casualty there. Wait. Nope. There we go. was a little nerve-wracking. Is this treasure from a past civilization? That's this place cleaned out. Yep. Off we go. Deeper and deeper. I think it doesn't even connect anything. We just fall down anyways. So 
jump off the fucking edge. The temptation is strong. But brick resist impulsive thoughts. Intrusive thoughts. Same thing. So yeah, the caves are getting a bit longer. They're less tutorial-y. There's actual threats now. Is this one gonna have an actual boss fight? Come on. Didn't every cave in Pikmin 4 have a boss? <laughs> Not a boss, but something I don't want to fuck with. Must be a castaway nearby. Yeah, fuck it up! <laughs> oh! <laughs> the castaway was inside of it, I guess. Ha <laughs> ha. Vor. To make a brick laugh. Research Task Force Unit, Francois. For years, this scholar's been working to achieve his lifelong dream, reaching mutual understanding with plant life. The research Task Force? I had no idea there were researchers stranded here, too. Let's... Alright, so, everybody flowered up, we good to go? Seems that way. Alright, home we return. I never picked up the map on this floor to double check. Eh, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> yep. The shun complete. Trying to do a Marge impression and trying to do a Toad voice are pretty much the same for me. Homie! Mario! Oh, wow. Guess, uh, we're not doing this Dandori duel, huh? Ah, oh, damn. For a second, I thought it was gonna let me do it. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Some of the objects I call treasure seem to be more complex than they initially appear. Makes me wonder, who made these, and where are they? I don't sense their presence here at all. I suppose they could be hiding in the shadows, secretly watching me. Alright, that's another one for the night. Yeah, 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 we go. Ugh. <sighs> Hmm. <laughs> 
With my crap sorted, I plan to record multiple episodes today. Maybe I shouldn't be drinking milk on the first one. It's making me sleepy. Yeah. Energy replenishment complete. Now let's switch on the radar. It's working! Yes! Once again, we've detected more SOS signals in an unexplored area. I'm glad to hear our search radius has increased. Let's not waste any more time. We need to get out there and find our missing rescue officers and Captain Olimar. What about the 500 other people who are no doubt here? Fuck them! Sorry, did I say sweaty bird? Internal measure, sphere family, middle management tank, back at the beginning, tandem trainer. Sphere of support, spouse alert, hoop of fortune. Memory fragment, top probably? Velvety dream drop. Unfloatable boat. Sweat soaked blue bird gross. Hmm. No matter how much I look at them, I'm still confounded. These treasures are mysterious things. Indeed. Who made them? And for what possible purpose? Think back to that treasure we found the first day. The Stone of Advancement. It was able to open and close, right? Maybe it was intended as some sort of makeshift shelter to protect its creator from the wind and rain? Interesting theory, though likely incorrect. She's trying. She's making an effort. Day 8. Oh, gee. Oh, we cleared that out. Now we have access to the ship that I noticed the last time. Hello? The rescue command post was getting a bit crowded, so we started clearing a new area when we came upon something odd. A spaceship in disrepair. Aww. Huh? It's clearly missing its captain. They're probably out there somewhere in need of rescue. We'll do our best to find them. I almost forgot. We also found some raw- Whoa. Raw materials while establishing the new area. Please put them to good use. All right, that one. Brimming with pop drive, Ochi. Aha! I've been watching you two progress, and you've inspired me to create a new training course. You see, when you're plucking Pikmin sprouts, I believe Ochi can help if he learns pluck. I've also added some training to beef up his dig skill so he can dig faster than ever. Okay. To increase his attack or his swim speed. Speed seems like a really good one. Uh, I'll put the one point just to have basic pluck, and I won't put any more into that. Great work, Ochi. Keep up the good work. Hmm, interesting. Detecting even more signals in that recently discovered area. That may be where Captain Olimar and our missing rescue officers are. I had no idea that anyone else had received the SOS signal and decided to come to this planet. But it doesn't matter who's stranded or why. It's our job to get them home safe. Ready for action? You ever feel stuck? Try talking to the captain. She always knows what to do. Kee <laughs> I've created a new item! Well, a prototype. Come see for yourself! Idlers alert. Why manually click click them that have completed your task when you can summon them? Ooh. And, yeah, anti-electrifier. Okay. So immunity to electricity and for Ochi. 
Homesick signal. When your Pikmin go missing, call them back to the Beagle. Works on any Pikmin not currently in your squad. Ooh. A mine! Since its movement explodes. You can even stick it onto creatures. Ooh. Evil. I like it. Oh. It's a bomb that explodes when it detects motion from living things. Plus, it's kind of sticky. Try attaching one to a creature. I want this. Come back and see me if there's anything else you need. So how does it work? I use it from the bag? Okay. You know, I see that one getting a lot of use. Oh wow, yellow and blue are even now. Alright, we'll plant yellows today. It's such a pleasure to speak with you. I'm Francois, botany specialist and enthusiast. You a plant lover, too. For years, I've been working on two-way communication between plants and, well, us. I think Pikmin might be the key. Kindness. That's why I love plants and Pikmin. They're kind. They listen when you talk and accept you, whoever you are. Who wouldn't want a friend like that? There'd be so much less sadness in this world than if everyone could befriend a Pikmin. For the good of civilization, we must propagate more Pikmin. Help me with this task for a token of my thanks. Oh, son of a bitch. The ones I just planted could have been worth it. Oh well. The faster the Pikmin population grows, the sooner the universe will overflow with happiness. Not to put too fine a point on it, but that means the happiness of the universe depends on you. No pressure, of course. Humpty. Whose spaceship is that? Oh, I recognize it. I know this ship all too well. It'll expand here at some point, no doubt. Yes, yes. Let's check out new stuff. I like reading these. Hoop of fortune. Do you ever wish you had good luck? With this hoop, you need not wish. Step through its glowing yellow center, and good fortune's sure to follow. Of course, for this to work, it helps if you believed it was going to work in the first place. Exercise is good for many things. Not only makes us stronger, it also helps us live healthier lives. <laughs> so grab each of this exercise machine's handles and squeeze as every muscle strains the effort. Take comfort knowing you're adding good things to your life. Marafuku. Surely there's a reason this image was broken in the fragments. Could it be a treasure map? Did someone split the map into pieces and hide the bits? Is today the day I strike it rich? Uh, perhaps I shouldn't count my fortune before it's found. The Sphere of Family The Sphere is believed to be the patron of families. Parents often implore it to help their children flourish, and who can blame them? Parents treasure their children, who then treasure their own children, and on it goes. Such endless love is a beautiful thing. This Sphere is quite unique. That is, it represents the very core, the pillar at the center of every living being. And to keep our pillars strong, this orb bids us one simple thing. Support one another. What a message. One for the ages and the whole universe. This fruit is a treat for the senses. Not only is it bright, its bright tear-shaped form pretty to look at. Its soft surface is also slightly velvety to the touch. Yes, two senses delight light it by one fruit. Or as they say, two birds, one stone. Oh dear, speaking of stones, do not eat the seeds. They're quite poisonous. What fruit is this? Man, it looks citrusy. Spouse alert. 
Do you have one of those spouses who loves to play pranks on you? For example, one who gets a laugh from sneaking up behind and startling you with a boo? Well, put this on your prank pulling partner and you'll always know when they're approaching. It's a must-have item for the spouse who wants to have the last laugh. Oh, it's just a picture of all of them together. This tank car works hard. It carries heavy and difficult to handle loads. Yes, it is pulled along by its superior, but it does a vital job connecting that leader to the cars behind it. It may be the middle management of rail cars, but that's nothing to be ashamed of. Sometimes in life, you lay down a track that seems straight as an arrow, but the fact is, it's not straight. Not at all. Follow that track and you could end up right back where you started. But don't let that get you down. Maybe you're right back where you should be. The step counter. This timepiece doesn't measure the passage of time in general, but the passage of time is felt by the one holding it. The user presses the button, the top button once per second, but how fast or slow they press depends on what a second feels like to them. Profound. I mean, maybe if you put too much thought into it. People walk at different paces, man. This rare and precious boat does not float. It was once used to predict a village's future. If by some miracle, the boat remained slightly buoyant in the water, it meant that village had the approval of the gods. Sadly, the boat's shoddy construction makes that seem like a rather unlikely outcome. Wait, is it a can? No, I think it is just a crappy toy. Someone put a great deal of work into crafting this particular replica of an avian creature. Clearly, each inch, each crevice has been infused with the sweat and prayers of its creator. And all that hard work and dedication has paid off. Behold, the aura that emanates from these folds foretells of great things to come. Perhaps happiness truly does arrive on the wings of a bird. And at the same value, even though that one's sweaty. Do drop by any time. Thank you for your help. I feel like an empty place inside me is being filled up. Ah, that was so fascinating. You must let me know if you find any more new snarly snugglers out there. Just imagining unknown creatures makes my little heart go ba thump ba thump. When you see a critter for the first time, don't get overexcited. Approach the, yeah, 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 okay. Try calm, gradual, you observe it from a distance. None in dialogue. Now then, you want to have a really fun time? Why don't we imagine the ecology of various wild creatures together? The Joust Might. The eyeball-like pattern on its shell reminds me of my father's eyes staring at me after we buried him in the sand at the beach. We dug him out immediately when he gave us that look. Makes it easy to imagine what an effective deterrent those staring eyes must be to natural predators like birds. If you were swept up and then tossed away by those long dangling arms, I think you'd better understand what it feels like to be a Pikmin. A little courage is all you need to try. Consider it a learning experience. In both its vibrant spring color and precise shape, the cunning crawler looks just like a leaf. It's the perfect camouflage. It only became an issue when this sometimes careless critter forgets to look for a hiding place with an abundance of other green leaves lying around. Then it becomes quite easy to spot. Mitite. Ugh. The cheeky mitite lays its eggs inside the eggs of other creatures to provide its offspring with an easy first meal. When they come wriggling and squiggling out, it's spine-chilling. But you can't blame the newly hatched larvae. After all, you might enjoy an egg or two yourself now and then. After flitting around all over the place, the wing beats of a little spectralid can cause a tornado on the other side of the world, or so some have said. What I wonder is how much influence did these charmers have on our being on this planet right now? The sight of this wee one boinging around and pecking at its food all while skillfully balanced on its one leg is truly awe-inspiring. If you get too close, it might feel vulnerable and give you a warning poke with its beak, or it might just turn to you for comfort. The yellow wally hop. Don't think of it as unexciting. This creature's simplicity is quite refreshing. Should you raise one from a whirlpool, you would certainly learn to adore it. The adults of the species can be a bit standoffish, though. 
It's going to sus inflate us. Shut the fuck up. See those prominent spines upon its back? I like to imagine that if you looped ropes through them and hung a gondola from the ropes, you could create a living airship. How amazing it would be to travel the sky with one of these spiky sweetlings. We'd float along together wherever the wind chose to take us. Yeah, I don't think it's friendly. Okay, so there's not separate entries for each one like in two. They just all get lumped together. The longer I look at it, the more I feel a strange urge to throw something into it. Succumbing to the intrusive thought, I once threw a bomb into one. When I did, patooey! It spit the bomb right back out. I can't help feeling some sort of lifelike response in that. <laughs> the intrusive thoughts won! <laughs> I chose violence that day. All right. We've done it at last. We've flown to space. Out in this great limitless expanse, not a sound can be heard. And yet, I can still clearly hear the pounding of my own heartbeat. Space, how it overflows with possibilities. There can be no doubt. This is one giant leap forward for our kind. Ed Shepard, the 65th. Pania Shepard, the 82nd. Thanks to the technology that's come from space exploration, our lives have grown much easier and far safer, and on-planet rescue requests have dr decreased dramatically. But as migration into space continues to grow, our services continue to be needed. So I'm happy to announce we are extending our rescue services to the frontiers of space. Irma Shepard. The previous captain, my father, was the very definition of generous. When a rescue call came in, he'd zoom off without a moment's hesitation. Once the mission was complete, he'd refuse to accept payment from whoever he rescued. He did this one mission after another, and now, due to his generosity, the rescue corps is... pretty much broke. Oof. Thanks, Dad. So area three is... by the water. Okay, that one's a bit of a distance from where we are. Like, Serene Shores, yeah. A water-themed area, no doubt. But we have barely touched the surface of Blossoming Arcadia. So back to the garden. God, it's almost been an hour and I only did one day. Ugh. If all Pikmin are lost, an onion will release a single seed. Oh, yeah, that. Okay. So materials over here. There's treasure, treasure, treasure. Sprinkler. Okay, we go around this way, we can drop that bag. Ooh, Farlick! We definitely want that! Oh, you cheeky bitch. That'd be problematic. Oh, they can reach it. Yeah, I didn't think through, um... The having to actually get it to them. 
Oh shit. Oh god. Oh god. Things are kind of... Okay. Okay, they took a little bit of damage there. number of Pikmin you can withdraw increased by 10 again. This makes you want to feed that onion even more. Hmm. So yellow and blues are currently even. cave of utter darkness into which almost no light filters. I explored for a bit, relying on the glowing mushrooms to guide the way, but I turned back to avoid unnecessary risk. I wish I had a better headlamp at my disposal. I'm starting to regret this bargain buy. <laughs> Game like nudge nudge, hint hint. You have a bud. Alright, alright. I'm a little scared to pick a fight with that thing. Alright. There's a bag there I could knock down. Get up there. Oh, a cave connect. It might be this cave, actually. Oop. Okay, red and yellow it is. Let's dance. <clears throat> Sightless passage. Only Ochi can pass through the other side of Pup Tunnel. Switch to him to explore. Oh. Guessing that's the thing we're gonna have here. Well, thankfully I did invest in the headlamp, because I'm like, yeah, that seems very handy. He <laughs> it was wise to bring a headlamp. Huh? There must be a castaway nearby. Okay. These are- Oh, little things. I'm used to them being in the water. 
Oh wow, Ochi just kind of fucking plows through them. Take it. Good boy, Ochi. Everybody panic. you guys over? Yes. See where the darkness shall take us. Okay, this one's zappy. Still get one more move in, huh? That's evil. Job for Ochi. Puppy. There's the one still dicking around over here. Let's go grab him. Oi, slacker. No bricks. Or brick break you.
Gotta hunt him. Right. And this is back by the beetles. Let's go cash in these slugs. Okay, we need Ochi to break, to knock that down. And there's the way out. Dum, bum, 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 bum. What's the ID badge say? Petunia, highly focused and intelligent. She joined this team to investigate mysterious creatures through her unconventional methods. To investigate mysterious creatures? She must have come to study the Pikmin and other unusual wildlife here. So what is this research team that's hitting the place up? There's our exit. Okay, so this place is just this one floor. This one darkest fuck floor. N no. That symbol is the bars that only I can pass through. We've got some materials over here, some shit to break. So this last corner over here. Why did that move? Ah! Picnic. Eighty percent. Right, this over here. could we be missing? Is it counting the materials for percentage? No. Oh, I... Okay, I definitely need to invest in the treasure radar. Hmm. 
<laughs> One treasure escape brick. A brick unhappy with this development. That was materials. Too big and complicated of a layout. There's nothing left. Okay. I'm definitely investing in the damn radar now. Wait. Like, wait, I have a fucking dog. I can sniff things out. How could I forget Ochi's talent? Find the loot, boy. I completely forgot that Ochi could do that. All right. We are donezo. Really, dog. Masterpiece Plank, Hoop of Healing, and Micromanagement Station. I mean, not incorrect. that thing from Pikmin 1. It's peaceful, right? We don't need to go pick a fight with it. It's actually a friend. Oh, it plays the Pikmin theme. That's cute. Um, where are you guys gonna go with that? We're getting a little con okay. Since we push that bag down, we can just get back up. So, I saw one in another spot. There are, like, flower mimics. I 
need to keep an eye on these. I don't think it- Oh wait, nope, that one's a fake. I see it. Oh, they're different than the ones from 2. They're more frog-like. They are frogs. Get fucked. I see some buds in our group. but oh neat cool oh that thing just ate treasure Handy upgrade. Glad I got that. Let's see. Blue's lower. Currently. fucking things from three. Treasure or not, these petals are lovely. Oh, is that another onion? What does getting another onion of a color I already have do? other side. Maybe another cave connects to it. Whatever it lands on is what it, we get. Yellow. Alright, so what happens now? They just make a bunch of yellows? 
Is something wrong? It sucked up the onion, but nothing's happening. Looking at the life signs, inside the onion there are 20 more Pikmin than before. As long as we already have an onion of the same color, the new one just gets turned into nutrients. So it's just a plus 20. I mean, that's still handy. Time to go fuck around with the cave. I think it's once it hits the red. I'm shit out of luck. We can make it. We can make it. Nice. One more for the road. Battle in a box. Don't get involved with bulb orbs if you don't have any Pikmin. Wait until your opponent defeats them, then steal them. Weight transfers the points. Heavier, yeah. So, you've come again. Those who do not embrace Dandori cannot survive this planet, but if they grow the leaves, we can return them to life. I will determine if you have the strength to save them with a Dandori battle. But this time, there will be one more rule. One must be ready to change tactics at a moment's notice. This round, an object or creature's value can increase for a brief window. Higher values make them bonus finds. When you transport and collect the bonus finds, you earn double the points. Do you think you can out Dandori me? Ready? Go! Show him who's boss! Okay, I can't use my stuff here, that's cool. Nice! Bonus find! Bonus find can help you a lot. Can even give you a big lead. The shortcut will be helpful in the long term. Little bastard.
Thanks for the freebie, asshole. Ochi can drink nectar to heal. Interesting. Again, you will show mastery in the art of Dandori. I leave the rest to you. Bye, bitch. Hmm, off they go again. Thankfully, you recovered the castaway safe and sound. Impressive victory! Try to practice Tendori in your everyday life. How about you talk to Brick's Fist? Transport the castaway, the SS Beagle, ASAP, Brick and Ochi. Another thing over here, yeah. Maybe Russ will have more success getting their ID information. Does this mean that when someone becomes a leafling, their biometric authentication data becomes unreadable? If even science isn't able to solve this problem, I'm afraid I'm at a loss.
Dun, dun. Bum, bum. Uh... Come on, boys, you can make it. Oh god, did I get it? Like, it seems like my whistle didn't work the first time. God damn it! You know what? You guys have no one to blame but yourselves. Fuck them. How far are we talking here? Let's do it, because that's so easily avoidable. Blue is the lower one. Okay, everybody's accounted for. Oh, we're good to go. Oh, my neck. So what's going down back at camp? Progress? I don't get it. 
Why do we fight? And why does everything have to be a competition? Is something the matter, boss? Nah, just a passing thought I had while watching that Dandori battle. It just strikes me as sad. Here we are, all living together and sharing the same universe. We should be friends, not foes. Makes sense. But then shouldn't we, and uh, you, be friends with all the creatures of the universe as well? Creatures? No, 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 no. That's an entirely different situation. <laughs> Fuck them animals. Super buff, higher attack. Faster rush would be a good idea. I don't know. How important is healing if, you know, I don't suck? Shortens the energy charge time of rush. More powerful impact, ooh. Yeah, we're gonna go for rush upgrade. I just love how science technology makes stuff by yada yada. Rush boots. The faster you go, the more you'll, the more you'll explore, right? It'll take everything they have for the Pikmin to keep up with you, though. Okay, immune to freeze. That's handy. But, yeah, the faster you go, the better you can do stuff, so speed is important. Although, I am worried about the Pikmin keeping up. Go ahead and get our freebies. Alright. And we've completed your mission. Ah, oh, you've collected quite an impressive trove of goodies. It's humbling, really. It isn't much, but please accept this. Cha-ching! Please, if you will, let me appraise as many goodies as possible. Because of your efforts, the treasure catalog's coming along very nicely. I assure you I'm beyond grateful. So, let's take a look at our new haul. The Sticky Jewel. Not only is this glimmering gem quite beautiful, but the mineral it's composed of is notable for being highly sticky. Often given as a present to a loved one, it represents a bond that is equally adhesive. Step through the glowing blue hoop and you'll feel its healing effects almost at once. Exhaustion is gone. Ailments of the heart and the body banished. You have to but make the choice to step through it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Orbitable communication sphere. The, s the balls are good. Names. This communication sphere has fallen from its place orbiting the planet. Note how, how the bumpy surface was designed to maximize transmissions. A pity that it's no longer functioning. Hmm, perhaps a blow with a large stick could launch it back into orbit. This device plays a beautiful melody that elicits feelings of nostalgia. There's something so familiar about it, and yet at the same time, it's completely unknown. Mysterious, to be sure. Touch the tip of this device to your cheek, and you'll find the number that appears there matches the warmth of your heart. When faced with stress or anger, apply this sensor to your skin. Is the number higher? If so, it's time to focus on keeping your cool. This desk features a built-in display, surely used to show important things such as map and vital statistics. No doubt many heated discussions have taken place over the matter shown here. One hopes that those who worked and fought at this desk also took breaks for rest and frivolity. This yellow plank, simply marvelous. 
The text upon it is indecipherable, yet somehow moving. Could it be some sort of a story? A masterpiece, I'm sure of it. How exasperating it is to not be able to read it even as it sits right there before me. I'd recognize that character. What game is that? Drawing a total blank. Please tell me every detail about the creatures here. Anode Beetle. With this little darling around, outer space's power problems are solved. These generate enough energy to light up the night and help people live comfortably on the most ragingly hot or frigidly cold planets. It'll cost to feed them, but, eh, minor detail. The Creeping Chrysanthemum. That wasn't the name of the flower monster in 2, huh? Because this is a completely different design. Let's have a Creeping Chrysanthemum show, why don't we? We'll gather... Hand raise creeping chrysanthemum, chrysanthemums and have a contest based on size, flower color, things like that. They're half animals, so maybe a behavior category too? Of course, how could the judges ever choose a winner? Each specimen is so beautiful in its own way. Mm hmm. Oh, I didn't go after it, but it's still, uh. A gentle creature removed from the fierce competition of the strong eating the weak. It sits in gardens in a pool of sunlight, looking content as it gazes at its big round eyes at a plant that is raised that's just starting to sprout. Don't tease this mild matter beastie by messing with the delicate sprouts it's tending. Yeah, like I said, it's not aggressive, and if you do, like, piss it off, it just, like, it just plants your Pikmin. That's all it does. At least in one. Let's see here. <laughs> just plants them. That probably hurts you, though. Yeah, if it hits you directly. Pyroclasmic Slooch. The mucus of the Pyroclasmic Slooch acts as a natural fire starter, but it also seems to serve as an insulation from heat. Gazing into those flickering flames at night would be a great way to relax, and the ripple pattern going from top to bottom is so mesmerizing. The Shuck Cake. Living creatures can sense your intent and emotions, so if you face them with love in your heart, they'll know it. When you love and are loved back, even the occasional electric shock isn't so bad. That's right. Instead of play biting, this sweetie does play shocking. It can zap away sol shoulder stiffness and fatigue in a flash. The Dumple, this motherfucker. Grub Dog. That's the... Huh, so they're related to bull borbs. This odd critter lost its vision, but it evolved a very sharp sense of smell to compensate. Even if you sneak up behind it very quietly, it'll still detect you. But with a mouth that opens up big and wide, approaching from the front isn't advisable either. No gushing that time, just... No, that thing will fucking devour you. Don't fuck with it. Alright, and we have our... Where are they? Ah. Come on. Rescue Corps? Is there someone who needs rescuing? I don't recall seeing anything. I'm what? Oh, I'm a castaway? Huh? I was so busy looking around at the flora here, I had no idea. Bitch! According to Olimar's log, an onion, as they're called, will fuse the onions of other colors. Extraordinary. For the sake of my research, if you fuse any onions, please let me know. What? You've already made the onion fuse? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again. If you'll allow me a moment of selfishness, I'd hope to see the onion prior to fusing. 
Well, too bad. Be somewhere more convenient. Ah, uh, you must want to ask about my research. Good, very good. I'm currently working on my hypothesis that the Onion is a biocrafter. The Onion's a biocrafter and intentionally created to ensure the propagation and safety of the Pikmin, is it not? To verify this theory, I have dedicated myself to studying the Onion. Do you think my hypothesis that the Onion's a biocrafter is pretty wild? If you'll humor me for a moment, let's consider it together. No. Its symbiotic relationship with Pikmin doesn't appear coincidental. Durability and flight capability allow it to travel far. Its ejections and production adjustments of Pikmin seem calculated. All mechanics that fit the idea of intentional crafting. <laughs> Moment, please. I must concentrate on observing the Onion. Hmm. So the Onion might be artificial? Would the Pikmin themselves possibly be artificial? Well, that's some shit to think about. But, for another day. Man, we just really leave these guys here, huh? So, that does it for another episode of Pikmin 4. Ugh. Oh, wait. These episodes are being longer than I expected. Whew. But, until next time, everybody. You all have a great evening, and take care of yourselves. Good night.